I sit down, I light one up, and pour myself a drink, and I have found that it picks me up, it gives me time to think. Been a long day, you know it's true. But I'm feeling right at home, and now I must say that time is due. Let's get on with the show. Not just blowing smoke. Go for Memphis. it. What? Start over. Hello, everyone. Everything's back to normal. Sort of. Which means we have our producer back. Yay! We're not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, <laughs> at least the video is like, you know, the right orientation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if the sound had been turned on, it would have been perfect. That's true. Um, anyway, it's not just blowing smoke, people. And I am Pastor Padrone. I'm here with my fellow co-hosts, Paul and Pat and Dave down on the end. And this lovely thing in the middle is Kelly Shemitz, good Jenny. friend of ours. And she was a, she used to be a cigar rep for Ashton Cigars several years ago. And today we are going to be talking about the afterlife. The afterlife. What happens after being a cigar <laughs> rep. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it something to look forward to? I don't know, but we're going to find out. Dun, and dun, dun. While we have that conversation, we are going to be smoking this first, the Tabernacle Havana Seed, Connecticut, number 142, David Perfecto. Everyone knows, Kelly, Kelly, you need to know that on the past number of shows, every cigar that we have uh, reviewed for the, it seems to have <laughs> names that go on forever. They're either all not, you know, this, it, you can't say it. So we've just shortened it. This is the David Perfecto and the uh, T, this is the uh, 142. We're just going to call it the 142. The 142. 142 David. 142 David. Okay. So far, so excellent. So the wrapper on this is a special um uh, rapper that uh, Nick Melillo has for himself that he grows in Connecticut, and it is go figure, the Havana Seed Connecticut number one forty two, hence the name. It's a, a San Andreas binder, Nicaraguan and Honduran fillers. It's a little perfecto five and uh, fifty four at the fattest part of this little bad boy. And what are we pairing with this tonight? Tonight we are pairing. The 724, 1792 foolproof Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Another very long name. Yes, I don't know what it is about Kurt and these long names that he has, but maybe it's not Kurt's fault altogether. But in any no. event, uh, this is a, uh, and like it says, it's foolproof. It's clocking it at 125 proof or 62.5% alcohol. Ooh. We are going to be getting some robust flavor out of this. Mm -hmm. We uh, put ice cubes in this. And we had to put ice cubes in this, absolutely, because this would absolutely, on its own, would overpower both the cigar and the pipe tobacco that we'd be having a little bit later, in our, in my opinion. Yep. I'm sure everyone would agree to that. Yep. So we had to put at least one ice cube in this, <laughs> and uh, it's so far, I think it's holding up pretty well. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is, this, this is a, no question, this is a, <laughs> a robust, foolproof bourbon. Yeah. Pat, what do you think of the uh, pairing we're having so far? It's good. I'm um, the cigar. It's good. <laughs> oh. it's good. I like when it. You do great, a proper, great. When you do a proper analysis, you do a predictatory statement. So it's good. So people know that I'm coming from that angle. Okay. Any boy. 
but one thing. So, I mean, the cigar is full-bodied right now, which I think usually when I've had this in the past, this is my third time. Yeah, you it was a little it bit mild to medium. Well, it was a little bit tight, so I think the smoke output was giving me like the misconception that it was kind of like around like the medium, but this is like so far perfect construction, so I'm getting a lot more smoke output, and it, it's definitely towards the medium plus the fuller side. Mm -hmm. And it gives like this nice crust of earth, a nice black pepper note. It has a little bit of leather. And then the drink is kind of giving me this pine cone type flavor. Like this, the woody note that's on the palate kind of develops into more of like a, a maple-y type sweetness wood. So I, pine cone is probably what comes to my a mind. A maple-y kind of sweetness wood like pine cones. Yep. Welcome I think back, that's Nick. very accurate, by the way. <laughs> you do not. <laughs> Dave, what are you picking up? I think that's spot on. Um, it's like a, a lot of tobacco notes. It's really municipal. Mm, very municipal. So, huh. Dave, what are you picking Sweet nuts, Dave. Are you getting sweet nuts from it? No, no, no sweet nuts. I'm getting, I'm getting some Are's cedar with some... A lot of earth and some leather. Um, the the cedar's definitely got like um, a sweet vibe going with it, and there's like this nice peppercorn on the mouthfeel. Paul, do, do we believe that? I'm just going to move on to Paul. Okay. Well, <laughs> first of all, I want to say that hey, my what... palate's been cleansed. <laughs> that in both the Havana Seed and in the original Connecticut Broadleaf Perfectos, the David and the Goliath, in my opinion, they are the best tabernacles out there. They, 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 they for some reason, they, it, the tobacco just really shines through. Um, this is my first time having the David, by the way. I'm mm, used to, I'm used mm. to smoking the Goliath, which I think is phenomenal. This is right that up there. That was me. Sorry this about that. <laughs> this is right up there with it. This is a nice cedar, earthy. Uh, almost a white pepper, uh, a little bit of stronger spice in the palate. The retro hail is just phenomenal. Really, really rich spice. Well balanced, well constructed. Uh, the flavors just really, really come through in this size and this vitola. Um, I think it's outstanding. Yeah, this is my favorite blend that Nick Malillo has done, and I, I would agree. I think the the uh, perfectos bring out the best. <laughs> Although bring out the, the perfecto. Bring out. The although best. I do think the Corona in the uh, 142 series is a phenomenal cigar. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like is. a close second. Different animal. Now, Miss uh, Kelly, what, what do you what do you think of the cigar? There, are you picking up anything from it? I think it's outstanding. Are you getting peanut butter notes or something? I I'm standing <laughs> out peanut butter. Um, pine cones. I, I love the pine cones. I love the peanut butter. Um, <laughs> anything that I know. No, I, uh, I'm a huge fan of Nick Melillo's blends. Like the foundation is just outstanding in general. Um, this is my second time smoking this and oh, you yeah, it's, good. it's, it's <laughs> creme de la creme. I had to say something and Kelly, yeah. Kelly, I've known Kelly since I first started here. Cause she, Four was, years. she was probably what in your first year as an Ashton rep at that point. Yep. Um, but having said that, I don't think you've purchased anything for me that wasn't foundation. <laughs> I've been trying to mix it up. Foundation, foundation, foundation. Girl. I love foundation. I no, love I, foundation. I, I, I love it. Oh, I love it. Okay. It's not. A, I love it's it. Not a bad brand. No, like. no. It's I'm, not. I'm, I'm just. It's just an observation, Dave. I think that there I are mean, worse things that I could be yes, obsessed no, with. Yes. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no question. I think foundation is phenomenal, but it's just, I just thought it was funny. Every time Kelly would come up and says, I want to buy mm -hmm. this, and it was, you know, oh, the yeah. Wednesday, or it was a wise man, or yep. it was the, Every, you know, Charter uh, Oaks. Yep. yep. If you go onto our Instagram page and look at all the selfies, they're, they're all Charter Oaks. Yeah. Shem, yep. Shem, right? yep. uh, and every, I love Charter Oak, too. Every morning, I, I would have to say pretty much every morning I start my day. Oh, I don't know what you just did. With but... a good foundation. I can hear everybody now. Just Yay! Like, I don't know what happened. We, we probably kicked the cord. Y'all don't sound like... It could oh, have been the cord. I think yeah. it was the yeah. cord. You don't sound like, you know, wah, peanuts wah, parents wah, wah, anymore. Wah. <laughs> <laughs> or teachers. Uh, this is wonderful. I'm going to put my other ear on because I can hear everyone now. Um, every morning, I would say, I start with the Charter Oak 
Connecticut, you know, shade foundation. It's just mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. At Connecticut Broadleaf, it's just what? Like the Broadleaf's good. Don't get me wrong. It's just that is the best. So like, like the Rothschild, though. Oh my God, that is just that. That's that's size... what I smoke. Oh. I used to smoke the, um, I don't know if it's a Petit Corona mm. or what the actual name of the size is. I used to smoke that one, and then I discovered the, the Rothschild. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is just too freaking We good. can't even keep those in stock. They're so hard. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. come up a lot lately, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. are you ever going to have a box for me? <laughs> That's the reason now. <laughs> that is why. It's my fault. So First, sorry, it was Paul. the Lancero uh, <laughs> we LA Wednesday. It said all of a sudden went oh, those petite, missing. <laughs> so those what, petite Lanceros I bought out until you were yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We were just starting the podcast when Kelly, you know, was just on her way out. So I had thought that we'd had her on the podcast. Nope, nope never did. She told this me, is a virgin no. episode. So and and this Hence is why this, I'm here. This is, this is your to continue Dave's lewd sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Your virgin podcast. Yeah. Yeah. This is my first, first time podcast. on this podcast. Any podcast. I did one other podcast. <gasps> I don't know if I'm allowed to mention them or like what your vibe is there, but there's one other know, podcast that's in it, New it England. Depends. Yeah, it depends. It's the cigar. Oh, the hatch. That's fine. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, we've done we've done we've, shows together. Good. Yeah. Shout out to the hacks. Episode. Love yeah. y'all. Yeah. Uh, so I did the hacks, um, but I haven't done any other podcasts. Nope, mm-hmm. because I think well, that I think you did two podcasts. Real podcast. <laughs> well, that's just video a, anyway. That's just yes. a, a bunch of hacks sitting around with microphones. It's literally in the name. <laughs> that's, that's, it's that's literally it in the name. <laughs> so, so you know, we've known you for years. You're all of a sudden, you know, coming back into the area and everything. We wanted to have you on the show, but mm. but nobody. Yeah, I else, come in like a tornado. For the baby. people, yeah, <laughs> for the people, perfect storm. Who are listening or watching who don't know you or your story? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where where are you from? So I am from. Don't say your mother. Connecticut. Connecticut. Um, Connecticut. Uh, so I, uh, I'll get, I'll, I'll base this all, you know, cigar wise. But um, I'm from Connecticut. I started working at Big Buddha Cigar Lounge in Newtown, Connecticut. Big Buddha. Big Buddha. Um, years ago, and it was a part time job in college. I was going there and smoking when I was. He's 19. Jesus. It's been 10 years now. So it was, I was going there and smoking when I was 19. What got you into cigars? Um, I lived with some family friends in college who liked cigars. And there was one day that they were, uh, they're out on their patio, husband, wife, they're Mm -hmm. amazing couple and they're smoking cigars. And I said, I'm going to smoke one of those. And they said, you'll get sick if you smoke one of those. And I am not the kind of person who can let go of a challenge. So, <laughs> really? so I was like, well, I have to smoke it now and never let you know how I actually feel about it. But sure enough, it was an Ashton VSG. It mm-hmm. was my first cigar I ever smoked. And uh, not only did I not get sick, but I loved it. Mm. So they were members of the cigar shop. Um, the Buddha, the Big Buddha the Cigar Big Lounge, Big Booty Buddha, Big Booty Buddha. What's so, it like working for a place with the name Big Buddha? So the reason, let me tell you, real, just brief. I mean, real I, brief. I, I, that just seems that just seems like there's something wrong with that. <laughs> so I don't know where it. Go act- back, hun. I'm going to Big Buddha. I. Uh, it's so funny. Smoke a cigar in his belly. I respect the fact that. Uh, Brian Roth is the owner. He had a different kind of name than any other place. It wasn't just another like smoke, smoke cigar, cigar shop. shop. Like yeah. exactly. Well, did they do like hookah too and like all that, or just nope? You know? Okay, so <laughs> just, that's why well, that's funny. It's even funnier now. I know. Yeah. So I don't know how it started, but somewhere along the way, uh, he he mentioned something about Buddhas and his. Uh, I think it was his grandmother started giving him all these little like figurines of Buddhas and everything. <laughs> he ended up having like 200 little Buddha figurines. <laughs> That's freaking and cool. So it, I don't, again, I don't know like exactly where it started, but mm-hmm. he, uh, when he opened a cigar shop, he was like, well, that's going to be the name of my shop because I have so many of these things that I have to put around. So they were everywhere. Yeah, so they were all over the shop. All yeah. over the shop. All over there. And booty booty is all over the shop. Yep, exactly. That's sick. So I um I started 
smoking there when I was, I think, 19. And um, I smoked there for about six months. And then <laughs> the manager then I came and said, it's time to go home. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long six months. <laughs> um, so then the manager said, uh, we we're... all love you, but your mom is looking at you. <laughs> yeah, like, you need to stop sleeping on the couch. Go home. <laughs> you had your own butt print in the couch. Yeah, yeah okay. honestly, that's not, that's not too far off. <laughs> so he's like, uh, you know, Brian, the owner, he's looking to hire a new girl. So I went the next day to Brian. Because who likes old girls, you know? Uh, it was, it, <laughs> right? Well, so she, didn't, she said new. Not young. I said new. Let's not discriminate, so, I'm not discriminating. I'm just yeah. I'm pointing out. <laughs> Carry on. So, anyway, <laughs> within the next couple of days, I walk in and I'm like, hey, Brian, I'm Kelly Shemeth. I smoke here a lot. Uh, I heard you're looking to hire a girl, and I'm a girl. And he was <laughs> like, and you're he, hired. And, well, so Is he. Is that literally what you said? Verbatim. I remember it like it happened yesterday. <laughs> And he said, okay, do you have a resume? Which I thought was so silly because it's like, it's in the cigar shop, dude. Like, and I I've said, been here for six months. You I, know my resume. <laughs> and I said, no, I was hoping to walk in here and ask you for a job and you'd give it to me. Like an egotistical, you know, not that I was like that, but I was just like, why are you even asking me for a resume? So I said, I was hoping to walk in here and ask for a job and you'd give it to me. And he was like, okay. <laughs> so five years later. I was their event coordinator, um, assistant manager, like just kind of ran the shop basically. Um, not to take credit away from the person that I worked for, but, uh, yeah, it was, no, it no. was, it was outstanding. And I, I just jumped into it. I needed a job during college mm -hmm. and I just, I, 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 uh, was it you part -time? I asked for what <laughs> was it part-time through college? Was it full-time? Was it full-time in the summers and part-time in when you were in school? How, how did so that work? So it was, yeah. it was always, it was always part-time, um, per se. Per se. I gave everything Persons. I had, every moment I had to be there. Like I was there, you know? Yeah. I fell in love with it the moment I started smoking cigars. Like what? I said, I started with a VSG. Mm -hmm. Second cigar was an Oliva V Torpedo. Oh, like I yeah. just dove headfirst mm -hmm. into the industry. Right and into the flavor. I haven't been able to swim my way out. Headfirst into full body too. Yeah. Yeah. It's my I think it's um it's funny because honestly, like I'm the only person that I know obviously that does like you know a B and M cigar shop as a yeah. part time gig when I'm in school and like I honestly don't think there's any better job to do when you're in school. Nope. Not if you like smoking. Because you don't have to, especially in retail, it's a different environment. It's not as stressful. You kind of build. It's not stressful. Yeah, you build like a relationship with the clientele. And it's, yep. you know, it's it's a nice way of getting out of that stressful environment of school and then kind of going into <laughs> an environment that you're passionate about, being able to talk to people about your passion and just sharing that experience. Yeah. Let alone mm -hmm. the, the networking alone, yeah. you know, the people that you meet, the all walks of life, you know. Just uh, Joe Carpenter to um, Mr. Millionaire McLaren, you know, and it's it's crazy. And we all, you know, it's awesome to all sit at the table. Yeah, yeah. like when I'm doing homework, I, you know, I think to myself, I X amount of cases left that I can go in tomorrow and twins and have a shift. You know, it's something I look forward to. It's not just, you know, clocking yep. in and working. It's something yep. you kind of, you know, look forward to every week. So yeah. it's a lifestyle. It's beautiful. It was, it's I mean, style. it is. <laughs> I couldn't shake it, man. Like, I jumped in, same as you. And it's like, it's, you're doing, I went to school for music education, which is essentially a double major in, you know, music, performance, and education. Now, where did you oh, go? Oh, did you play an instrument? What did you play? I sang. You sang? You her instrument. My is voice is my instrument. Do you still sing today? I do. You do. Did I you do. sing something for us? Nope. Yeah. No? <laughs> Uh, maybe the next podcast. <laughs> if you have another seventeen ninety two, if I'm, if I'm invited back, you'll have to be back on in two weeks. You can sing me Happy Birthday. Okay? All right, that, oh, I would love that. Why don't so, you sing now? So funny, yeah, I should right. Sing, um, sing Happy Birthday now. Yeah, so, just finish your glass. Uh, anyways, <laughs> let's let's talk after this. Um, <laughs> uh, one of the things that we had to do, we had this 
freaking test called the barrier which is a terrible name but um it's like get through us but one of the things we had to do is play uh play the piano we had to know happy birthday and i had to go up there and play it in whatever key i chose and then the the panel of judges would say okay here you have to play happy birthday in the key that we choose so i had to know happy birthday in 12 keys so oh my god so i know it so I got you All in right. two weeks. Don't Sweet. you worry. I got you. You're, you're on. The, you're on for that. We're holding you to it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Don't get bored of me, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no. There's a little chance of that. <laughs> now, you did that. You went to college, you know, for for music education, <laughs> and and you worked in the cigar shop. Yep. And, and did you ever go into music education at all? So, um, in the terms of did I ever have a job teaching, no. Um, the last thing that I had to do in college was student teaching, which I think was six months. Mm -hmm. So, I did three months, and I know my girl Lindsay's watching right now, and she's going to be like, it was only three months, but, you know, whatever. I, it was either three or six months, but I did basically half a year. I did uh, three months in an elementary school in my hometown mm -hmm. and then I did three months in a middle school which is so funny because I did not expect to like middle school I always said if I'm gonna end up teaching music um, I want to do elementary or high school mm -hmm. because middle school is such a trouble year yeah like your trouble three yep. years really yep. Um, yep. I mean I was homeschooled for middle school like <laughs> it was very much not into the middle school and it was my favorite I went in there and I don't know if you guys know what boom whackers are. They're basically pipes of different sizes that are made of plastic, mm -hmm. and you hit boom, them together boom. and make a pitch. And um, so I went in there, and I on my first day, I told these kids, I was like, "Okay, you're We're gonna, gonna write." I was like, "You're gonna write your own song," and they laughed. And it was my challenge. And the fact that, like, after three months, they were like, "Oh, we could do this now," you know. Mm. And it was it was very cool that. Just to see the growth there. That's badass. It w it was really really cool. That's awesome. It's funny how you said that you were trying to either do the grammar school or high school mm -hmm. because I was a camp counselor uh, many camp years ago. Camp counselor. Yeah, and and the in a previous uh, century the <laughs> camp counselors <laughs> always wanted to either, either work in the junior division or the senior division. Yep. They didn't want to do the middle, uh, inter sorry, the intermediate division, the ten through twelve year olds. Because they just like you said, mm -hmm. yep. they're trouble, mm -hmm. yep. and and it was right. They were right. They were, that's where the most mischief comes from is that age oh, bracket. Oh gosh, yeah, yep. it's a hard age. Yep. Man. Middle school I mean, is that horrible. is yeah. It's such. I mean, Dan, you get it. I do. <laughs> you got. Oh, he three. totally has <laughs> it. He's living <laughs> it. You're living it. Anybody, <laughs> anybody, you know, the, the people who say, "Oh, middle school was awesome." Mm -mm. No, no. If say if they say that, they're one of them that made it miserable <laughs> for you. That is totally, totally how it works. I swear, the only people that were happy during middle school are the ones that had the parents where they were just like full on schedule and they had like no time to themselves, because if you had like any time, it was just horrible. Yep. Mm -hmm. It was a, it's a it's a rough three years for kids, mm -hmm. and I mean I'm very fortunate for what I had. Yeah, I, I hated so, middle school. I just can't believe that that was what I liked more than anything. Now, Elementary, I was like, ah, y'all too young. I've like, always <laughs> I've always had the the mindset that you know you, you got to do high school, mm -hmm. you know because you, you, it's required <laughs> by law or whatever. But yep, college, you should really just kind of go and. Do what you do what you love or what you want to learn about yep you know if you're going you know when it college isn't really so much about uh career because 80 percent no of, it's about exploration because 80 percent of people in my opinion are mm -hmm. not working in their college major five years after they've started right. so it's not really about that yep. so why go into it thinking that if you're going to graduate school like our little Carnegie chum here is doing, then yeah, you. you it's that's, a doctorate. That's about. That's about. <laughs> you get it, buddy. <laughs> that's about your career. So, like, if Pat goes through law school and ends up with a doctorate, and then decides to open an ice cream shop, I mean, he's got that's a gavel. complete he's total. Ready to go. Oh, that's a complete stand. total failure. <laughs> but you know, for <laughs> for for you, 
You can you can make a million dollars out of ice cream. Now that you're still gonna be the failure, Brad. Okay. That said, Just saying. Are you done, Dave? All right. The soundboard, Dave. The soundboard, Dave can shut itself off now for the rest of the night. Okay. Dan, uh, just like now, I went to school for music education. Yes. And, and I and fell you, in love with selling cigars. And you, and like you fell in love with selling cigars. So. So you're hey. a failure. <laughs> Basically, what I got out of this, I work for FedEx now. <laughs> so, so, how did? How, it could be what DHL. Did, yeah. What did your? Yeah. What did your parents? What did your parents think when you never materialized that kind of career? Was that something they thought you were going to go into, or were encouraging you to go into, and then you? Did you were supposed to be the next Mariah Carey. What happened? That is a fabulous question. Um, my parents, as long as I was doing something, my parents encouraged me. <laughs> and my Dan, why? You're paying for your own cell phone. Honestly, because <laughs> <laughs> um, we're not paying for it anymore. My my parents were always just happy if I was happy. I had the best. I have the best family. Like they're just. Your parents are still alive. Yeah. Yep, mom and dad still together, still hold hands and dance on Friday nights. That's to freaking awesome! Oh, that's awesome. Yep, yep. I wish I like could they say just, that. they well, just. We used to. They were. That's how it was. <laughs> though. Sorry. We were, we, were, we were really lucky with our parents. They Not to bring other. this down. <laughs> Thanks for opening that sore subject. Anyways, <laughs> you you asked. I yes. Um. So I, uh, my parents are always just happy if I was doing something that made me happy and. Um, my dad was like, you have basically, he's been under the mentality of, uh, college, you go there, you get the piece of paper that said you had ambition after high school. Yeah. Mm. That's really what it is. Well, you get a BA and you can work almost anywhere. I have a BS. Oh. Whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, <laughs> I have a BA and a BS and a... <laughs> it is BS, isn't it? And then it's BS that we need this. Where, so, where's the place. DR, Dan? How's that going? Uh, that Doctor Padrone. <laughs> yeah, the Doctor Padrone thing is. It's got to happen. We got to get that done, man. We, we, do. we do. I'm like eighty percent done. It's, oh. it's got to get done, but it yeah. got sidetracked so because I'm, I'm, for, for crazy those... estrogen palace. Yeah, <laughs> it, it rules, rules the life. I feel for you. Ugh. I'm so happy you're are here. Are you gonna? Are you gonna? Yeah, let, I'm, I'm functioning. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> save, save your breath, Dave. You can't. Yeah. You, you can't take a breather, forever. man. <gasps> um, oh, so anyway, so I, uh, I with the music education degree, it was yeah. like more. So I always took the degree that I had. I, my dad, since I was a kid, has said like you could sell ice to an Eskimo, and I didn't get it until I got older. And then I'm like, oh, totally understand now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like teaching now. I don't discredit anything. Like Lindsay is, she's a music teacher. I can't do what she does. Like she's just incredible, and she shows up every day with a smile. But I feel like there's something about. Uh, about teaching that's very much like sales because you're literally trying to sell what you're doing right to your students so anyways that's me well, there is there's a lot of crossover between <laughs> there's a lot of crossover selling, a lot of crossover so do well, you feel yeah, do you feel that everywhere. that background helped you and and as you as you got into selling one million percent yes. one million i have one million plus one. <laughs> i have uh i have used that in interviews saying that i have this teaching degree and this is what i'm doing and um you know the fact is when you have students everybody learns differently like i am i'm visual maybe slash kinesthetic like i just need to do and i need to see if someone tells me something, it's not enough for me to actually learn it, you know? Right, yeah. So I'm, you get I'm the same way, you gotta look hands on. Yeah. So mm. you get in front of a classroom and there's twenty students there and everybody learns differently and you need to essentially sell them on what you're saying mm -hmm. and make them understand in yep. all these different ways. So I go into an account and I'm like, I'm a very I'm being chill right now, but I'm a very high energy person. So no. <laughs> I don't know. Really? Sorry, everyone. You're boring me. Come on. Sorry, everyone. I know. <laughs> Anyways. So, um, 
<laughs> so I uh, I'll go into I'll go into a customer and I'm like, oh, this is a low talker, and so I'm like, hey, how you doing? And then they're like, I'm good. How are you? And I'm like. I'm good, thank you. <laughs> I just have to adjust, you know? I think that it's absolutely... I think everything's sales. I think everything is adjusting everything to the everything person is, that everything you're talking is, to. Yep. There's a lot of truth to that. Yep. Now, look, how did you get the job as a rep for Ashton? You're so, working at the Buddha. Mm -hmm. you, you sit and smoke for six months. <laughs> go ask for a job. You, you basically say, you will hire me. They hire you. <laughs> and now... What what possessed you to want to go from the big Buddha to to, to being Rapid a cigar life. rep yeah. for anybody, let alone Ashton? So um, I I love Did you just get bored. I no, it's not that I got bored. Didn't like the people anymore. I loved the people. The, Buddha, the Buddhas were starting to get a little I loved tired, so all the, the little Buddhas everywhere. It was so wonderful. I love the industry. I really. Love this industry. It's a beautiful Why thing, isn't do it? you love the industry? So, in my opinion, not to get all weird and sentimental, but like, I think that this industry is... Here we go. I, I know. I'll make it as quick as I can, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have heard this, but anyways. Time's um, up. So, yeah, you cut me off. So, um, the cigar industry is so unique to any other industry. And, you know... You can have a guy, if you're a bartender, if a guy come in and they order a Heineken and they chug their beer and they get out and you'd be like, hey, Dan, how's your day? Like, mm. whatever. And then they get out there, right? Yep. When you're in the cigar industry, you have someone come in, they're going to smoke a cigar. It's going to take an hour, two hours, whatever it is. And you bond with these people and you build relationships and it's such a relationship industry yep. and i mean you all know that Absolutely. like you all are in it so like when people come in they're able to like they know you and it, like it, it's so funny because they're your customers but at the same time they come in and they're like no we love you guys like this is like we come in and it's like hey you know Paul, how's your how's your wife? How's your like life? How's everything like that? And you just you build these relationships with people. I um I've been out of the industry now for two years. I step back in, uh, going to places and seeing people again, coming up with you guys in August, mm -hmm. and it feels like I never left. Like it's just it, it's just such a welcoming, warming kind of industry, and it's so hard to describe. It's just like. It's not the come in, chug a beer, and leave kind of thing. It's yep. come in, have, I mean, at least. I. It's an I, experience. It's an experience. Yep. And I know that, like, your situation is different. You have the lounge and the bar upstairs and everything. But still, you got people that come in every day. Yep. And it's just, it's different. It's just different. And so I worked, I worked a lot of retail, too, in, um, in a lot of different retail places. And the experience that I've had with the tobacco business is absolutely unparalleled as far as relationship building with my customers. Yep. And it is my favorite part of the job is to everybody that comes in to tell, talk to them by their first name. Yep. You know, that's just never happened in any other business I was in. And well, it's just special. It's awesome. like through Dave being sick too. I, I had countless people come in asking if Dave's doing well. And yep. then even to this week when mm -hmm. he's back asking how he is. So it's, I don't think in many industries, especially in retail, you get someone that notices an employee's not there and actually has like a yeah. genuine concern. It's a family, man. Yeah, exactly. It I didn't close, even know that many people liked family. me. Yep. <laughs> like, yep. I like, I was like, holy crap. Yep. Everybody no. reached out and wanted to know how I was doing and. Well, it's one of the, it's one of the few industries where you're actually selling happiness. Yep. Yes. Oh, you know, you are. I mean, yeah. how many people I do you know that, that actually are smiling when they come in here because they know they're going to come in and get a cigar that's going to make them happy. They're going to they're going to be relaxed. They're going to be they're going to unwind no matter where they are, whether they go to the bar, whether they go to outside of the deck, whether they go to their home, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, mo and how many people do you actually hear when they come in there and they say, "How's your How's your day going?" He goes, "It's good now." Because yep. they know they're yep. in a place where they're going to find mm -hmm. happiness. Yep. Yep. So that's and totally it, true. And it's one of the few industries where I think we do that for them, and it's uh, it is a unique, it's unique industry. So unique. Yep. So how did you end up going from 
working at a cigar shop where you get all that interaction with the customers and all that stuff to to traveling as a rep so um i met andy green who is i think now the vp of sales for yes, ashton right mm -hmm. um he was the national sales manager when i was in uh when i was working for buddha and everything mm. um but i i always wanted to get into the, i work for a uh, i work for battleground cigars as my first rep company mm -hmm. and it was very um they're great it was very much a localized kind of situation where i only worked in connecticut and i didn't <laughs> i had no idea what i was doing like, how did you just, land that um kind of the same way i landed buddha i just <laughs> went in there and said hire me <laughs> i was like hey you've known me for years you should hire me <laughs> okay god i feel like i've done that a lot actually <laughs> <laughs> give me a job okay. i'm like hey i'm great i could do this thing for you let's make it happen so um my uh my old manager at buddha at this time i think i was i went and worked for a different cigar shop briefly uh in shelton and shelton connecticut um and he told me uh my old manager texted me and he was like hey the ashton rep is leaving mm. uh john murphy yep. john murphy's leaving he's moving and everything like that and i was like okay uh should i send my resume out and he told me I just texted Andy, and he said, yes, please send it. We so, don't need a resume. We just want to hire you. <laughs> that's the honest one. Well, anyways. <laughs> um, so I uh, I emailed Andy, and I said, hey, super interested. You know, that's all. And I went out to Philadelphia, and I had my interview. And the interview was very interesting because – I went in there and it was, I sat at the end of this long, like, conference table, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I was at one end. Is it just you and Andy? No, it was me. Oh, thank goodness, because that would have been awkward. If you don't know Andy Green, he's a really short dude. He was at one end of the table. And he was in a other. big. That would have been he very. He was in a big chair. <laughs> that would have been very awkward. <laughs> so uh, I went in there. What was the name of the king in Shrek? <laughs> yeah. Lord Farquaad. Lord, Lord Farquaad. That would have been like Lord Farquaad saying, oh. And he was great. <laughs> and he is great. So it was me, uh. Uh, me on one end, and then they all sat on the other end. It was Andy Green, Chip Goldine, who was the VP at the time, Michael Walter, who was the director of sales at the time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it. And you all just smoked and. So what's super funny is they, uh, they I walked in. And there were, I think there were like, I don't know, 10 cigars on the table. Oh, wow. And they said, pick a cigar. And what's super cool about Holtz, uh, Holtz is Ashton. Holtz is where you they're know? at, yep. So uh, that's the conference room we were in. And they said, pick a cigar. So I got to smoke during my interview, which was outstanding. <laughs> yeah, who <laughs> like, cared about the interview, right? Who <laughs> cares about nerves? <laughs> so I went in there. I'm like, yeah, I'm smoking. I'm a, I, I got this, you know? And I went in there. And they were like, pick whatever you want. And they had uh, they had San Cristobal Quintessence. They had um, Ashton. I don't know how much Ashton they had, but the point is, um, I picked up the uh, the ovation mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm like, all right, if I don't get this job, at least I could smoke their best cigar. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's very smart. Yeah, that's what, kind of what I figured. Um, but I went in there and I went out to Philly and I interviewed and uh, it was. I didn't, it was on like a Wednesday or Thursday. Mm -hmm. I got home. It was Friday. I was like, all right, haven't heard anything by now. No worries. I'll probably hear on Monday. Um, Sunday night, I went to this cigar shop and I watch football every Sunday. Yeah, baby. And I think it was like six o'clock on Sunday night. I get a call from Chip and I'm like, I see a California number come up and I'm like, no way. <laughs> and he California. <laughs> and uh he was like we want to offer you the job i'm like i Hell yeah. lost it i could not believe it i could not believe that i got this job and he called me six o'clock on a sunday which was three o'clock his time he's california but mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. you know um then on a sunday though that's still a little bit like i was thrilled 
I did not care. I don't care. I wouldn't have expected a call on Sunday. I do not care what day it was. I did not expect it, though. I expected to hear from them, like, you know, mid next You know, that means he couldn't wait. Yeah. It was Sunday, and he just had to. That's Mm -hmm. awesome. Absolutely. (laughs) So, what did you do for for Ashton? Well, I was there. their sales manager in New England. Mm-hmm. So I covered, when I started, I got hired for um, Connecticut, upstate New York, and Northeast Pennsylvania. And they lost their representative for New England shortly thereafter. And so they were like, quickest promotion ever. <laughs> so I ended up covering all of New England, including Connecticut. And I think it was about a year in, year and a half in, that they said, uh, you're going to lose Connecticut. So I did um, Rhode Island, Mass, Vermont, New Hampshire, me. That's still a ton of shops. I loved it, though. But I it... loved it. I love, I mean, dude, I, I live in Connecticut. I've been up here so much <laughs> in the last few months. I just, I love the drive. I love doing all of it. Mm. And, like, being able to go to people and be like, hey, here's why you should buy what I'm selling right now. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's, I, I just, it's. I'm sick. Like it's just. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me let me let me ask you a question. You know, you, they they took Connecticut and gave it to somebody else. You know, for Jordan, for, who for is whatever, incredible, for by the way. Reason. Now Connecticut's where you live. Yep. Connecticut's where you you know Connecticut. You know. Connecticut. Now, uh, he, here's my question. Yep. Were you able to just eat, go to? Big Buddha or wherever it was that you were and and basically relax because you weren't the rep or were you like crap I'm not the rep so (laughs) the thing about going to places especially Buddha oh my mic's being weird um the the thing about going to places especially Buddha in particular is that because I worked there for so long Mm -hmm. I would show up there and feel obligated to empty ashtrays and fill drinks i still do i went there the other day i went there the other day i go into the kitchen to get a water or whatever it was and i have these guys like hey kel can you can you grab me a coffee and they're <laughs> me- they're messing with me but at the same time they're 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 serious you kinda like want them to you know i just yeah. felt i know That's i awesome. do i just fell right back into it That's so, so cool. um it wasn't like Oh my God, they, they printed out, I sent my offer letter to the owner and the manager of Buddha when I got it from Ashton, because it was just such a, like, it's such a step up, you know, from what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I sent it to them and they printed it out and they printed out a baby picture of me and it was hanging (laughs) on the wall for like, I don't, it might still be there. It was like four years. It's just me eating spaghetti and... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> with my offer letter on the wall at Buddha. Like they just they're the best family. They're That's just awesome. so proud. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So you were with Ash and you know for all that time. What what was the most rewarding thing to you about that job? Twin smoke job. <laughs> honestly, honestly, honestly. Hallelujah. Hold on. Right. I gotta when I met Pastor Padrone, I just said, oh, uh, this <laughs> is where it's at. So, um, <laughs> why most... don't you have me on your podcast? You know what was cool about Ashton is it's kind of like FedEx, where. <clears throat> what? <it's... laughs> just wait. I'm going to explain it. Okay, right. I'm waiting. <laughs> it's not the cheapest product. But it's the best product. Ooh. And that's very, uh, which is cool. It was a good transition from, you know, Ashen to FedEx because it's like, all right, I'm not selling people on like, oh, you can sell this cigar for six bucks. No, you can't. But you can sell the cigar and know that you're selling the best cigar. And it was a really good transition in that kind of sense, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Good, good. So most rewarding aspect for me was going in, I I guess going to customers and explaining to them like, hey, like, yeah, this is not the, you know, I won't mention any other companies, but like (laughs) going in and saying like, this is, uh, this is a product that you need on your shelf. This is your bread and butter. Get this in. People will buy it. And period, period. 
That's it. it really, yeah. I mean, we really don't have to. It's. It, I also really, had an event. My first event was. You don't have to push Ashton. My first event uh, with twins, I think I sold 75 boxes of cigars. So, I mean, I guess I could say that was my most rewarding <laughs> moment. But um, I had a friend that was a rep out in Michigan for Ashton. And he told me uh, when I had to, because we have to like logger calls and stuff yeah. like that. And he's like, you need to write rock star event. <laughs> it's your call logs. And, you know, stuff like that. I, I really, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm a freak. I love the selling mm -hmm. of all of this. So I guess going in and explaining to people and convincing people that, like, this is the best product on the market kind of thing. You and know? seeing that happen. Mm hmm not to, you know you're you're not into just going in and selling an idea and no but following up but on following it and seeing that and, it actually is a thing seeing that you were right yep right yep you know, <laughs> i love <yeah>. love that <laughs> she does love seeing that she's right yes <laughs> same with pat too same you with know pat. It. Yeah, hey. <laughs> <laughs> all right now now yes you you you've already kind of let the cat out of the bag you're now working you're now working for fedex i am so how did, how did that happen so um i worked for ashton for two years and then i got this job offer from fedex and you know we got nice packages godfathering it <laughs> we got they, nice they, they made me an offer i couldn't refuse <laughs> and uh so i got out of the industry but um it was it was a it was a very good move at the time mm -hmm. and it was you know i don't know nearly as much about shipping as i do about cigars probably not yeah at the time <laughs> and you know probably what probably still not <laughs> it is it is i did not realize what an animal the shipping industry really is oh like gosh. i'm like especially now now it's like on steroids like oh it's, it's oh dude. my god i can't even imagine you must oh. be so overworked oh my god crazy so now, <laughs> you know, many people I hear in the shipping industry complaining about Chewy.com. Yeah, ask your, <laughs> ask your UPS rep when he comes Amazon. in. One ask more. your UPS rep when he comes in because, mm -hmm. you know, we can't ship tobacco, unfortunately, right. with FedEx. But um, as of 2016, which I looked up today. But anyways, mm -hmm. um, so I found this job with FedEx and... They said it would only be Stamford, Connecticut. So I went from covering all of New England to just one city. Mm. I'm like, I got to do this. I got to get into this. So yeah. I did it. It was it, it was a pay raise. It was uh, more local, you know. And you I, got to be home more, too. And I got to be home more. And I got a puppy yeah. right, right when I started Ashton. And like I'm like, I got I to gotta do this. Yeah. So. Kendra would be proud mm -hmm. that you because of the puppy. Because of the puppy. It's for the puppy. <laughs> yep. It's for the puppy. Yep. All right. Now we're just about at the the end of the first half of the show. And so Already? Kind of got, yeah. This is know, so right? darn so good. So we got to we got <laughs> we got to wrap up what we think about the cigar. So, Dave, what's what's your take on the uh, cigar and the pairing here? Oh, well, the pairing has definitely brought out a lot of the cedar to me mm -hmm. um and put it in the front that this is uh that peppercorn is just melding with the with the cedar the um the finish of the of the uh what 1972 mm -hmm. it's just oh 1792 1792 is just did you say 1972 yeah. 1792, <laughs> some century but uh oh it's the year Kentucky was founded, 1792. This is where just, it gets its name. <laughs> this is magnanimous. Like, oh. That's a f that's a million dollar word right there. It is. Thank you, Paul. Yes. Someday he'll look it up. Yes. Um, Pat, <laughs> you've been very quiet. That went That's because I'm talking like <laughs> <laughs> my job depends on it. He's you know, he's trying to make his cardigan look as good as possible. <laughs> look at that cable knit sweater. Like, come on. I know, man. So nautical. A nautical so nonsense what? be something you wish. So that's a legit, it's a legit question, Pat. What, what what did you think of the scar and the awesome. pairing? Yeah, it's... So I'm taking, like, really minute sips out of the drink just so it doesn't overpower the cigar. And 
The, so so that I, the thickest the gauge get gets on the David's 50, right? 54. 54. 54. So it was a really consistent smoke. Obviously, as the gauge changes, because it's a Figurado, it kind of gets a little bit more intense. But basically, speaking of what Dave said, I mean, the the wood note, which the cedar note kind of get brought out a lot more from the drink. And I still kind of concur with that pine cone thing that I said, because it has like this there's no maple syrupy no, i can see it. the pine cone it's just uh, but maple syrup is not in pine cone oh it, it all kind of goes uh, yeah, i'll say together, baking you know. spice if you want me to say mm, baking spice uh, we don't want you to uh, say uh, that. Baking spice. Spice. Oh, wait why syrup. not wait why can't he say because baking he spice? says it every five minutes oh <laughs> i haven't said it for three minutes <laughs> <laughs> i'm picking up plenty of baking spice i have to like not say salt when you say spice you think pepper and I Pepper. appreciate that it's because if you pepper. go into a spice cabinet, there's cigars that are like that, where it's not spicy, but it is spiced. Yes. Yeah, hit, hit so I'm sorry. I'm with Paul. He's I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm with Pat on he, this. He, he's, not think, he's not thinking pepper. He's thinking some like, you know. Like cinnamon. Rosemary. <laughs> cinnamon. <laughs> yeah. Nutmeg, nutmeg. I feel that. You know. Nutmeg. Mm-hmm. Every time I smoke a new foundation, I'm like. How did he outdo himself again? <laughs> I know. Bring him Nick. All right. So, Kelly, that, that leads to you. What, what do you think of the uh, cigar, and what did you think of the pairing here? Outstanding. All around. Paul? Well, first of all, the construction has been spot on. Yes. I've not had to relight it once. Yes. Um, it's, it's Only the, one has been talking The uh, The flavors <laughs> keep shining through. The 1792 has brought out a lot more of that sweet, savory spice notes. Mm. Just incredible flavors from this. Um, it's just an outstanding cigar. I think this is really a, one of the best pairings. Absolutely. And again, we thought that 1792 was going to be a little bit stronger. The ice has definitely helped, helped it's been, it. and again, with it all now completely melted, um, it's still relatively <laughs> strong bourbon, but... It melted almost as soon as you... Yeah, it really <laughs> it did. <laughs> it did. But I think it's been a fantastic pairing. I think it's just been a phenomenal cigar. Um, this, I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, it's funny, you know, I'm... I was really when the when the David and Goliath came out, I was drawn more to the Goliath than to the David. Mm. Uh, Shocking. But, but I have <laughs> hey now. <laughs> right? <clears throat> talking, well, you know, as, as you somebody fed me ten cigars yesterday. As somebody as somebody who has gone through the the pastoral and biblical studies, the <laughs> idea of smoking Goliath had a lot of things going for it. You know? How are whereas, you not into more whereas David? Smoking, whereas smoking right? David just... In that sense. <laughs> smoking David just sounded wrong. David's the underdog. He won. Yes, right. he won. Beheaded he won. that mofo. You know? But, beheaded you know, that mofo. Hashtag beheaded that mofo. <laughs> anyway, I, I do think that David is the better Vitola of, of the two. I agree with that. I, one. I like yeah. I like them both very much, but I think that David is you know, just does a better job of intensifying the flavors and this particular blend, mm. the uh, one forty two, mm. is just phenomenal. And in this format, in this Vitola, it's mm-hmm. amazing. Uh, I really loved it with the seventeen ninety two. Um for the first time I think I'm the person who actually pretty much finished the drink. You know, I yeah. feel like Old Nick. Nick. Yeah, there you go. You know, um, really, really good. Incredibly well. Exactly. It went incredibly (laughs) well. Now, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to be smoking Briar Fox. We're going to continue our talk with Kelly. We're going to do pastoral confessions, so don't go anywhere, or you'll be very, very sad and angry with yourself. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Paul, Pablo Maduro here at Twin Smoke Shop in London Dairy. And today I just want to talk about some of the cigars that we've had in our humidor over the last week. Uh, first off, we've got the Aging Room Nicaragua Quattro. This is the impromptu size, otherwise known as a Figurado. Uh, this cigar, not this particular cigar size, but this cigar was the number one cigar from a cigar aficionado for 2019. It's an all Nicaraguan t- uh, tobacco. Uh, beautiful cigar, medium full smoke. Got to come down and get one of these. Next, we got the 
Gurkha Nicaragua TAA, another Nicaraguan Puro, medium full smoke. Um, we don't really have Gurkha that often, so got to come down and try one of these. Very, very delicious. Next, we got the Hoya de Nicaragua Doscientos, or 200 years. Uh, this is a medium full smoke. This is a five country blend. It's got an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, Mexican binder, and then fillers from Nicaragua, Honduras, and Dominican. So that's another great cigar. This is the Devil's Night from Asylum. Now this has been out for the last five or six years. Comes out on Halloween Eve, and that's to pay tribute to the Detroit Fire Department. Every year they seem to have a lot of fires, mayhem, theft, whatever have you that they have to uh, answer to. So Asylum decided to create a cigar in their honor, and part of the proceeds goes to the Detroit Fire Department. This is a Honduran Puro, medium smoke. Comes in a, a pack of five from Robusto, Corona, and uh, a Gordo. 45 to 52.50. Come down, get them, they won't last long. And lastly, the 724 Original Series Reblend. A lot of people have been waiting for this, and we finally got it in uh, the store. Um, this time, instead of a, of a six country blend, Kurtz decided to have the cigars manufactured in Nicaragua. So we've got the Brazilian Manafina wrapper, uh, San Andreas binder, and then fillers from Nicaragua. Beautiful, medium smoke, great flavor. People, if you've been waiting for it, now's the time. Come on down and get yourself, smoke yourself a piece of history. Hey, Pastor Padron here. Wanted to take a couple of minutes and talk to you about what's new in the pipe section here at Twins. First off is the 2021 release of Cornell and Deal's House Reserve. This is a special blend that they're coming out with annually that is exclusive to brick and mortar stores. You can't get it online. And um, this year features a Virginia blend. It is red and bright Virginias that are it's a mix of, of stoved and unstoved Virginias. And there's a little bit of a citrusy casing that's put on them that pressed and then cut into flakes. I'll be honest, I don't really taste the casing very much at all. There's that natural citrus that comes with bright Virginias anyway. And so it really just kind of marries the flavors and brings everything out. There's like rich notes of stewed fruit and wood and hay and that citrus that I was telling you about. It's awesome. So come on down and get this before it's gone. It only comes out once a year. And then uh, something else that we have in the store that people have been asking for are Dr. Graybill pipes. We have a selection of these. They come in a number of different sizes and they range in price depending on the size of the pipe and uh, the uh, accents on it. This one here with the little nickel band is 50 bucks. It's a nice little cigar, it's a nice little uh, pipe. So we've got a good supply of those and filters to go with them. That's what's new here in the pipe station. Why don't you come on down? All right. Oh, we're we on. Are sorry. Back. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Oh, it's sorry. Okay. being honest now. Sorry, it's children. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here we go into Pastor Padron's cigar <laughs> confession. And here's what we're going to talk about. Uh -huh. bombs. We're going to talk about the fact that oftentimes we talk about. I'm going to leave. <laughs> We talk about pairing cigars with something to drink or with something to eat. But yesterday, I paired cigars with a movie marathon. And it made me think about the different ways that we can uh, utilize cigars <laughs> to improve our experience of things. Kelly came over to my house, um, and she told me a while back at some point, that her favorite movies were the Lord of the Rings trilogy. F yeah. And that she memorized them and could recite them and mm -hmm. did recite oh, them. Oh, I put In it fact, on a resume she once. She put it on her resume <laughs> once that she could recite the Lord of the Rings. And I told her that when I was a youth pastor, I'd done this thing called Frodo Friday, in which we had about 30 
kids Frodo. from our church come over on a Friday afternoon right after school, and we watched the extended edition of The Fellowship of the Ring, had a huge Hobbit-like dinner, watched the extended edition of The Two Towers, and then after that was over, went to the midnight opening of Return of the King. Mm. And she was like, that sounds so awesome. If you ever do that again, let me know. And I said, well. Kelly had a few Manhattans at that point. I'm like, <laughs> I said, well, I'm like 50. I don't know if I can do the all night thing again. But if you want, we can pull something like that off. And so we actually planned it. And I said, you can't watch The Lord of the Rings without smoking something. It's nope. all this smoking pipes, especially, is such a big part of The Lord of the Rings uh, story. And uh, so I started putting together uh, a, a package of, of cigar I can smoke in my house, which is, I know some of you are thinking you're jealous. You, you should, should be. be. And I, uh, the more I was getting into it, the more I realized I, you know, it was just so, it literally, that, that package of, of smokes that we did, it took me about 30 minutes to put together. And... It was all, all, everything we smoked had either something to do with a character or something to do with a moment in the movie. And long it, it, there was a long, there was a, a lot of ways in which doing that helped you get into the story. Or so, at least me. Okay. Kelly might have I gotta been hype, I got to hype you up now. I got to hype you up now. Dan paired every cigar with a moment in the movie. That's let me, awesome. Let me yeah. give an example. I'm jelly. So you should be. It was amazing. So we had this. We had this one part. I think it was in Return of the King. That was all about uh, Gollum, and he knew it was very Gollum centric and Smeagol, whatever centric. And he gave me a Cro-Magnon knuckle dragger yes. because <laughs> Gollum is like. Anyways, sorry. Never quote me on that. So, um. <laughs> Wait, that's on the town board now. Well, good. He's basically a director <laughs> walking on all fours. You know, <laughs> and it, it, everything he did had a purpose, and it was amazing. I was, I'm so overwhelmed with gratitude, but essentially, I mean, I'm sorry, more than that, I'm overwhelmed with the fact that you thought all that out so much. He made so, like, the hobbits have like breakfast, second breakfast, lunch, and afternoon tea, dinner, supper. He made a meal for everything. That's awesome. But like by the time dinner rolled around, he's like, "Here's my gumbo." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm gonna die if I eat anything more, Dan. Like I've eaten so much cheese, crackers, salsa, <laughs> chips. Like, <laughs> I cannot function anymore. He he at one point reached out to me. He texted me. He's like, "You good?" I was like, <laughs> "I just I'm holding my head like this." I was like, "I'm so shot." <laughs> But yes, I couldn't be better. <laughs> I've got a hobbit in my belly. <laughs> Honestly, I was a hobbit yesterday. So, like Dave, when when the Balrog came out, mm. okay, I, 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 handed, I handed her a Fausto. Oh, and you had to smoke that. And having the strong, peppery, mm. nasty cigar in in this. You know, which totally you fit. Shall not pass. Totally fit that 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 whole scene, and then kind of continues as Gandalf falls. You think he dies? Jeez, you know, I forgot this about the bitter, <gasps> this bitter, you know, After strong nine cigars. I brew the that you have to drink, <laughs> and then they go to Lothlorien and yep. rest in Lothlorien was the 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 uh, Tatuaje T110. Oh Metro. my God. Oh, and which was just so smooth. You guys are so the cutest nice. brothers. I like this. Just, <laughs> and it was just, you know, but but doing all that together, it it just it just fit and it helped to enjoy the movie more. That's so epic. And I know Paul has has thought about. You got to make that relating, like a yearly thing relating to activity. I can't afford to do that. You got to come next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I'm well, someone had a Are word. you ready for yeah, 14 hours at Dan's yes. house watching Lord of the Rings? And great. eating his food? Yes. Yeah. It was great. It was <laughs> great. Can you say... <laughs> oh, come on now. Can you say... Wow. <laughs> 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 uh, Pat, you like Lord of the Rings? Yeah, it's good. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. Pointy hats, you know, little things. Let's go. Hey, Great beard, pointy my, hats. Uh, my friend from Not the beard. <laughs> my friend from Canada visited. I think it was probably what like a month ago now, and oh, he wanted to get. On a pipe. I'm sorry for them. I'm not even responsible, but I'm to, so sorry for them. He wanted to get on a pipe, <laughs> and he went to Dan, saying that he wants to be like Dumbledore. So we got a church warrant, and then Dan got him. I think it was um, what was it? It was the. Oh my gosh! Uh, fourth gen breakfast, I think. Uh, the the um, morning blend, yeah. Morning blend, yeah. And he's been, I so he actually texted me. He's already out of it. I had to send him more because he's just watching Lord of the Rings on his porch, just smoking the entire like. I think he got four ounces total of it. Mm-hmm. It's gone already. And, like, it's gone. Yeah. Wow. No, but he loves it. That's a lot of smoking. So, yeah, the, the Lord of the Rings thing was 10 cigars and five bowls of pipe tobacco. Oh. Help me, people. That's what brought you through, you know. I wonder why you were asleep all the time. Yeah, but, like, I can't believe that I can actually taste anything today. <laughs> mm. So, <clears throat> have any of you ever tried to pair a movie pipe to or, cigar? No, well, pipe or cigar <laughs> smoking <laughs> with something other than food or drink. Either an activity or yeah. a movie or music, something like that. Because I, I, I really do. I really think that we kind of hit on something. Uh, because you know, when you're watching the movie, you're 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 visually involved, you're audibly involved, and with a cigar or the pipe, when you see sm- people smoking the pipes, and you're smoking the pipe too, and you're smoking something that you're imagining they're smoking, y- you get more into it. Dude, oh, let yes. me tell you. Rush twenty one twelve in a Alma Fuerte. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mad Men. Mm. That series, which I still have not finished, but every time I watch Mad Men, I'm like, how am I not smoking right now? Because they smoke. I mean, they sell and they sell cigarettes. They, I think they do like Lucky Strike or something like that. Mm-hmm. Every, but they're always smoking they're always drinking and i'm like this is such a bad influence for me <laughs> <laughs> anyone else want to add to that you want to add to that Paul? yeah so i, I mean obviously i can't smoke in my house so i can't watch so movies sorry, i know Ooh, i know sorry. i can't watch <laughs> movies i can't you know listen to music and smoke but what i do is you know my day off um i take my dog every week to a park Mm-hmm. and I let him just, you know, wander, do whatever he wants to do. But that's, to me, if I'm going to, when I do that, I want to bring a nice, smooth, medium smoke, something that I can really relax to because it is a relaxing time for us. You know, he just goes off into the woods, mm-hmm. you know, you know, runs around, explores, does does whatever he wants to do. That's his day to do, you know, that's our, that's our, that's our bonding time. Right. So I want to have a cigar that's going to be able to, you know, keep up with that, but be very, very relaxing too. I'm not going to smoke something that's going to be more full body. Uh, I, I don't need to like sit back and I don't have, obviously I don't have the opportunity to sit back with him, no. but uh, something that's going to be really, really, you know, nice and flavorful. But just something that can we can just really be calm and, and relaxed and, and walk through the woods together. Mm. Um, so that's the activity that I will I will match with a more of a medium, uh, flavorful smoke. If I'm going to be sitting down uh, on the back deck, usually in the summertime, um, that's when I'll and I want to contemplate uh, or listen to music. That's when I'll have more more of a fuller body cigar. Mm. Dave, what about you? Have you ever tried that pairing something with what you were doing? more so than what you were eating or drinking cigars are all about the experience man mm-hmm. yeah that's mm-hmm. why I'm, I, I and i think oh. i think we can talk about the experience yeah. in, you know it, it, in more in turn more than just uh tasting and smelling i actually did that today um i spent my my um max our old employee he dropped off uh oh, a bunch of uh desktops for me and i was uh, i'm a techie so i just love building and fixing stuff and so while i was doing multiple installs of windows i was smoking a nice 660 1874 Mm -hmm. oh that was just wonderful and just had music playing and i'm Mm -hmm. just in zen nerd mode it was Mm -hmm. beautiful you know i'm such a nerd about i (laughs) will light up i will go to the gym leave the gym will light up a charter oak 
Connecticut. <clears throat> of course. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> but what I want to say is that I have found a new love, which is the 724WK. Mm. It is amazing. Oh, my God. That is my favorite 724 now. Yeah. And now. Nick found a box that was two years old. <gasps> oh, my God. They were amazing. Wait, Nick White? No, the other Nick. Nick Flanagan. Black. Nick Flanagan. Yeah. Flanagan. Cool. I'll have to reach out. Very <laughs> it was. They were really good. They I smoked never, all the time. Well. I had it for the They're first time the other day. They're always in my rotation. Day. Amazing. I've smoked hundreds of these just this week with several the handles of great. Bacardi rum. I'm not doing this. <laughs> it was very municipal. Yes, it and was. I very. always smoke them when my wife is in Puerto Rico, because I have nothing else to do but me. Sweet Yo, nuts! Shout out though to Nick's wife. She makes the best coquito. Like yeah, she, she's very good at stop. stuff like that. Yep. Like, oh my goodness! Mm. Oh my goodness gracious me! Pat, Pat, say yeah, something, so. Pat. Not Say Pat. something, please. <laughs> something. I, I have. Can different... you smile? He is. Look at it. We're back to this. <laughs> oh. we're, well, we're, I mean, we're getting comment. Back at that. <laughs> I'm a serious dude. Um, uh huh. Well, no, I. Depending on what classes I'm briefing, I have certain cigars I like to have. I mean, it. I don't know. It just kind of sets the mood and kind of gets my focus. So I mean, like for instance, like civil procedure is kind of like a game of chess. Mm-hmm. So I like having something a little bit more full-bodied, like, you know, mm -hmm. like Liga Pravada, you know, so like Undergrounds, Tens, Sin Copper Misos, you know, because it kind of gets like that kind of tempo, my thought process can kind of mm -hmm. go, and it's kind of like that, you know, just, it, like I said, a game of chess, because that's yep. literally what civil procedure is. And, and then, you know, something like business entities, pretty cut and dry, it's more of just kind of absorbing the material, so I like having like a nice Connecticut shade. Just to kind of like, you know, keep me calm and keep me relaxed. And then, like, crim procedures, a lot of legal analysis. So that's something I'll kind of go with, like, a nice Sumatra, medium bodied. I'm serious. I, I have some. <laughs> what about, what about Fuentes? Where, where do they come in with the Oh, well, that's the after. That's the celebration. That's the after. It's a celebration. Yeah, you're done. done. You're done. <clears throat> so, uh, December 24th, when you're done with everything, you're going to be smoking Fuente? Oh. <laughs> I already have it lined up, Paul. I'm gonna have one of those. Anejo you already have it lined up. You have a, men you have a menu. <laughs> this is human gonna start <laughs> off with an anejo shark, just because I know you like them. Um, oh, How God, can yes. you go wrong with PJ? You're gonna have a PJ. Oh. I might cigars. crack a PJ open. We'll see how the finals go, but yeah, I might crack those open. Mm. So now that we're 15 minutes into the pipe section, I'm going to talk about <laughs> the pipe, the pipe, and what we're smoking. Mm. We are smoking. Cornell and Deal's Briar Fox. It is one of their most popular, best-selling blends. It is, however, new to the Twins selection of tobaccos. And from the tin, it says, an exceptionally smooth blend of Virginias and Burley and a personal mm. favorite of the late Danish pipe maker, Peter Hessian. Briar Fox <laughs> is pressed into an old-fashioned crumble cake, <laughs> making it easy to prepare for whatever consistency you prefer. Its flavor profile starts with a clean tobacco taste, heightens in complexity at mid-bowl, and finishes with a spicy character that will make you come back again whoop, whoop. and again. I'm down with that. We are continuing to have the uh, 1792 with the cube. Um, well, the cubes are no more. No, nope. but we are having the seventeen ninety two with this. Paul, what do you what do you think of the pairing so far? I know you were kind of nervous about this and how the tobacco and the this yeah. very strong yep. drink would would pair together. So with the tobacco on its own, um, I got a lot of the uh, subtle, sweet, earthy, woody notes. Mm -hmm. uh, but r what really rounded it all out was that spice. Mm -hmm. from the burley and i think we talked a little bit earlier about there's a little bit more burley in this than mm -hmm. what uh, a normal virginia burley mix, uh, yes. blend would be um, but i really really like that spice at the end it just mm -hmm. really seemed to hone all the mm -hmm. other flavors together but with the drink the drink is is taking away the sweet and the spice it's bringing out a lot more of those earthy woody notes yes yep yep um so i yep. think it's i think it's good um i think this the the 1792 might be just a little stronger than 
Even with the cube. Yeah, even with the cube, I think it's maybe just a little stronger for the tobacco. Um, I was hoping maybe it would retain the, at least the spice notes, but it, that's being pushed I'm back a little bit. still getting some of that in the retro, but, you look, yeah, but, but not the, as much on the palate. Yeah, no, it's really not much on the palate. Retro, you have to you have to retro to get the spice, but I think it's it's okay. I think it's uh, it's it's pairing decently. Mm-hmm. Kelly, what do you think? Or are you Kelly. still texting? I'm not. <laughs> She's sexting. Lindsay texted me <laughs> and said, how's the pipe treating you? So I thought that I was not doing a good job <laughs> is what just happened. Well, I'm going to ask you about the pipe now. How is How, how do you like the pairing, so the, the tobacco, the pairing? So the tobacco is fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, maybe the drink is slightly overpowering for the tobacco. Mm -hmm. um, not that it's bad. Right. Uh, yeah, I well, that's what Paul's basically saying. Yeah. I, I don't think it's bad. I just think that the drink has uh, more of a kick to it than the tobacco. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pat? There's only a few pipe tobaccos that I, I think could <laughs> handle like a 120 proof drink. So, again, I'm taking really small sips of it, and I think it is kind of coating the palate in a positive way. But mm -hmm. I'm getting, before the drink, I'm getting a lot of sweetness. It's like a stone fruit sweetness. There's a little bit of a woody note there. And then the drink enhances the fat. I am getting some spice on the finish. Like, yeah. I am retrohaling. I am getting Paul's spice. Point. And I think that earthy note that Paul's talking about, to me, is more of like a leathery note okay. from the drink. Mm -hmm. but i mean I, I wouldn't say the pairing's bad by any means no. i just think you have to you know consume you have to it. moderate yeah, yeah you, if you take a big you know sip of the drink it's definitely going to overpower the mm -hmm. tobacco but if you take a nice like you know palate coating of it, it it is i think bringing out a little bit more notes Make you get otherwise so you can't you can't like go all flanagan on it you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, no really flanagan tonight sip it well, if you went all Flanagan on it, that whole bottle would be gone by now. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's what we're talking about. We don't need to Flanagan, <laughs> or we can, like whatever. <laughs> we can Flanagan, we can Flanagan. Flanagan. <laughs> okay, tribute to the Flan. <laughs> all right, so Kelly, let's mm -hmm. let's get back to you and and the afterlife. Oof, here. yeah, let's mm. do it. All right, so <laughs> you were with you were with Ashton. Yep. You're now at FedEx. I am. Um, how do those compare? What are the pros and cons there for you? So I kind of touched on this already, but um, going from... Touch on it again. I will. Touch it. <laughs> so going from, uh, you know, I obviously, I love cigars. Obviously. I, obviously. I love cigars. I love the industry. Selling a tangible product that I am absolutely in love with has been amazing mm. then i went to fedex and it's not a tangible product it's shipping so it's like i will go into places small businesses i have so my uh my range for like revenue is i think it's it's like seventy five thousand to i think the cutoff is like one and a half million basically mm -hmm. which sounds like a lot it's not that much in shipping for big companies, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. like worldwide sales. They do Walmart and they do, you know, Scholastic right. Books and they do all this stuff like the, the bigger companies. Um, it is. First of all, <laughs> I've learned how astounding it is, how much people spend on shipping. But um, I, I think that the transition between um, Ashton and FedEx has been, you know, it's been very smooth because I like selling. I mm. love going in. And it, it for me, the whole thing is about building relationships and going in and finding what makes someone tick and finding what makes someone happy and not going in like a, you know, used car salesman, <laughs> mm. <laughs> actually going in and being like, hey, tell me about your life. Like, what do you got, man? Like, I was just telling my friend that I texted uh, texted one of my new customers who's been he's been my baby since I started with FedEx. I've been wait he has a startup company. I've been waiting for him to actually start shipping. He just started shipping a couple weeks ago, and I wrote to him. I texted him the other day, and I was like, "Hey, gonna be in Stanford, like let's get lunch or whatever." 
I accidentally texted it to my coworker with the same name. <laughs> and he's like, I think this was meant for the wrong person, but I would love to do lunch. <laughs> but I, uh, my, my point of it, all of it is that I, the sales part of it really uh, takes the two jobs and puts them together because I just love going in and making those friendships and building that relationship. And it, it feels less like a job, you know, than it would if I didn't love it. So what do you miss most about being a cigar rep? Okay, the silliest answer. The free cigars. <laughs> okay, well, there is that. I have learned since I left Ashton how much I spend on cigars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It is a lot. <laughs> um, but you kind of need to work at FedEx. I, I'm like, why more. doesn't FedEx ship tobacco? <laughs> um I've learned how much I spend on cigars since I've left Ashton. Mm -hmm. um, Does it freak you out? Sometimes, but <laughs> usually no. <laughs> um, I feel that I miss, I honestly, I miss being on the road, which mm. is something that is like a, a thorn in so many rep sites, but I love the driving. I will mm. get in my car light up a cigar and drive around and make my sales calls for FedEx because I'm like, I did not get hired to sit behind a desk. I can't mm. with COVID and everything. I mean, yeah. I've been doing yeah. zoom calls for a year and a half. I worked for FedEx actually seeing customers, I think for a little less than a month. And then I had to go out and actually, or, I'm sorry. And then, then COVID happened and we all went into quarantine. Mm. And so I'm just seeing my first customers now that I've seen in a year and a half. Like, wow, wow. that's crazy. Yeah, and Zoom calls kind of suck. So yeah, it's been a long time. Um, I miss being on the road. I miss doing that. Like, I, 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 I miss that, which mm. is so silly because so many people are like, this job would be so great without the, you know, the drive all the time. And I love the driving. I love driving. I discovered Audible, mm -hmm. which is the, you know, audio books. Yep when i started I with ashton time, yep. and i just i i love it i didn't listen to music for like a year because i was just listening to books these books like lord of the rings yeah. where it's like for me like reading it it just messed with my brain and i wasn't able to actually like focus and i'm like i just read the same paragraph 10 times yep <laughs> so i discovered audible and I would just listen to books and I would, I would have no, I loved if I had a two and a half hour drive. So mm. I would say <laughs> long explanations with Kelly. It was a very easy question. Here I go. Um, but that's <laughs> what I miss. <laughs> what are you glad you're no longer dealing with? I don't know. Stupid customers, I guess. Like it's not and that I, never ends. And I didn't have many, but I just had customers that I would go into, and um, I guess that would all that that would be all that I could say for that. Like it's not. I loved my customers, but every once in a while, you 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 know, you'd get the one that was like, <laughs> just had no clue. And <laughs> the, bad, the rock looked sharp, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was just it was bad sometimes, but. Uh, I would say, I, I don't know. I would say that's probably what I'm okay with not dealing with. All right. That's very PC. Um, <laughs> what, super PC. <laughs> super PC. What misconceptions do you think people have about the life of a cigar rep? That's a great question. I think that people uh, assume that me and the other cigar reps were always against each other. Mm -hmm. And running into another rep on the road was so refreshing because we're all doing the same grind and we're all doing the same thing mm. and sitting down and I'll light up an Ashton and so-and-so will light up their cigar and we'll just sit there and be like, what the heck are we doing? And we love it. But mm. like, you know, just getting into it and it, it, talking about what we're doing because I can talk to you guys, you know, till I'm blue in the face, but it's the people who are actually out there doing it making the drive doing the grind and it, it, it's just it's different you know and being able to so i think that people assume because i mean we are we are i'm not in it anymore but like uh 
we uh, I, we were competing against each other. Every rep is technically competing for that shelf space. <laughs> and it's it just doesn't feel like that when you actually run into somebody because it's just refreshing to actually talk to somebody who gets it. Yeah, it was I was a rep for Microsoft and let me tell you when I ran into like the dude for Nintendo and I ran into the, you know the dude for Sony, it was it was grudge match time, you know? And it's different. It's crazy. The cigar industry is such a family. It's insane. Yep. Like I've never met. I, I, I know I already talked about it, but like this community is so different than any other community. Like if reps are all in the same area, and there's like a one of them's doing an event, they 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 offer to bring stuff over, and it, it's just like you know, I it's, can't. It's all family. Yeah. It's all, all. It's so awesome. I can't tell you the amount of times that I've had reps, other reps, show up to my events, and. You know, have reps that I became friends with text me and be like, what do you need? You need coffee, you need food, you need whatever. And they show up and they support your event. You are their literal competitor, but they show up and they support you. It it is so unique to this industry. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Of course, I never did that for anybody, but they all did it for me and I was very happy. (laughs) Uh, Oh, no. (laughs) I I am done Uh, funny. uh, I am done uh, funny. Now, as I cut them was... at their knees, sorry, just <laughs> quick, only a flesh wound. Quick change of topic. I am not dead yet. I think that's the mechanism. Are you done with can singing? You light, can you light your pipe? I'm trying. <laughs> what was the most embarrassing thing that happened to you as a rapper? This is a great story. I'm so glad you asked that. The reason it's so great is because it involves ready. Twin smoke shop. Yes. Why am so, I not surprised? I walked in with our VP, like second highest person in the company next to the owner at that time, right? We went to a competitor shop just before. It was my first time seeing Twin Smoke Shop. Mm-hmm. And I walked in and I handed uh, Sean, mm-hmm. you may have heard of him, uh, he's the general manager of Twins. I He was like, you know, nice to meet you. We shook hands, reached in my pocket, handed him the business card. And he looks, <laughs> he looks at it. He goes, I don't want that one. And he hands it back. I gave him a competitor's business card <laughs> instead of handing him. <laughs> like, Did you see the vein on his forehead? It was... Oh, you know it. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh that was probably my most embarrassing moment. And also one of the moments that I look back on and one, I f- I flush every time I think of it. But such a funny moment. How <laughs> can like that is just hilarious? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty my funny. bad. And then we're he's in the meeting with myself and the VP. And we're in the meeting for probably, I don't know, twenty minutes or so. And he looks at me and he goes, Kelly, would you mind giving us the room for a minute? And I'm like, well, that was a fun two weeks with Ashton. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Apparently I'm fired now because I just messed up so hard. And I left the room and totally thought I was going to get fired. <laughs> I didn't, by the way, <laughs> in case anyone's wondering. Well, not if you were only two weeks in. You were there for two and a half years or something like that. Correct. That's right. Now, um, what what drove you nuts as a rep? Drove me nuts as a rep. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of the same thing of like trying to explain to customer, trying to explain to the customers that wouldn't get it. So, cigars are keystoned or not, as mm-hmm. any other tangible product is. Mm-hmm. Trying to explain the value of our product to customers who did not care about the value. They were just like... Give me a quorum. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like... They're just like, why can't I just, you know, 50% this? I'm sorry. That's not actual math. But why well, can't I just double the cost of what I paid for this? And uh, I-, I think trying to explain that to the customers that wouldn't get it, that drove me nuts. Because I'm like, you have a product in front of you that is... I mean, the Mercedes of cigar companies. How can you actually be arguing me? Like, new customers would be like, 
I'd go into new, like, brand new shops, and they would just be like, yeah, I don't need Ashton. I'm like, are you kidding me? There are five companies, really, that you need, and then you can dabble in the boutique companies. And those might end up being your best sellers, but you need the bread and butter companies. You need the Generals. You need the Fuentes. You need the Ashtons. You need those because when people go in to buy a cigar, that's what they want. And that drove me crazy when people would just be so against what I was doing. Mm. Yep. I totally get that. That's cool. Cool. Uh, Glad I answered properly. <laughs> no, you did. You did. Um, now, that was two some years ago that you left, right? Yep. You haven't lost your love for cigars. Mm-hmm. Right. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> You're now gaining a new love for pipes. Mm-hmm. As of yesterday, I am <laughs> officially. <laughs> so what do you get out of cigars? Why why have you not cooled off? I mean, it was one thing when you were working at the shop, <laughs> then it. you were working <sighs> then you were working for Ashton and that was it was your life, but now now you're in something where not only does it not have anything to do with cigars, FedEx doesn't even ship tobacco. <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing that you. So you're completely out. So what? What? What has kept you going with cigars? What? What? I... You smoked eight cigars with me yesterday. <laughs> I smoked what, nine. Uh, nine. Please don't minimize what? my attempt. <laughs> In I'm five so bowls. Sorry. Sorry. Nine. I. Yeah. So what what keeps you going with cigars? What do you get out of them? Great question. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. I know you worked hard to come up with that question. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I um, cigars are. <laughs> That's like giving you the evil eye. That's all I can think of with that straight face he's giving you. Nah, think I. That's just cool. When is no worries. We just stop talking. I talk so much. I'm so sorry. Anyways. <laughs> Um, what do I get out of cigars? I, uh... Tobacco notes? Yes. But, so, I started smoking cigars... I started smoking cigars 10 years ago. When yes. I was... Yes. Right. But you're, you're still smoking cigars. So what, what, what the heck happened? And the reason why I love it is kind of what I said before, but the cigar community is different than any other community and yeah you get the jerks that come in to the bar and we don't have that problem in connecticut because we don't have bars in cigars so <laughs> but you get the jerks that come in and they're they make a fool of themselves and all that stuff but for the most part you get people that come in and they want to enjoy the cigar that they're smoking and they want to build the relationship with the people that they are working with at that moment and since the moment I got into the industry, I have recognized the family community that actually is about cigars. And I know that sounds cheesy, but it's true. Like, there's, there's no... I can walk in right now to the cigar lounge that I worked at for four years mm -hmm. and be like, you know, like... <laughs> I've told y'all, but my, uh, I went to a chain place this week for my oil change. They overfilled my oil and now my engine doesn't work. I could walk into my cigar lounge and tell them this and there would be 10 guys who were like, oh, we'll help you out. No problem. It's just, it's a different vibe than other places. They yep. just have this different connection. They have this different community. And so that there's that. Mm -hmm. The next point, which I think I said to you yesterday, um, when I was talking to Mandy, actually, your wife, so she asked me why cigars are not an addictive kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you don't inhale cigars, first of all. Second of all, um, I absolutely, if I am stuck in traffic, as soon as I see those brake lights, I'm like, I need a cigar. <laughs> and it just makes it like i there are you're you get into the 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 lifestyle mm -hmm. and the habit of it all but you know so for me 
I leave, I go, I do my workout, I leave the gym, I light up a Charter Oak, Connecticut. Almost every time I go. Like, every single, in the parking lot. And these guys are looking at me like, what's this girl doing? <laughs> like, every time. Now, the 724 WK is in that rotation, by the way. <laughs> um, I just, uh, I, I love cigars. I've loved cigars since the moment I smoked my first VSG torpedo. It, it It's just something that I've always loved but for me it's really the community is just uh unmatched all right one last question as many as you want dude I don't believe it believe it Dave I don't believe it. Believe it. we're on a time schedule I don't believe it not. Not. Oh, yeah. uh and and this is the question would you ever consider <laughs> I know what this question is. Sorry. Go. Oh. <laughs> Would you ever consider back into the cigar industry? For the right offer? Absolutely. I miss <laughs> getting out there and selling cigars. I miss going in and being so overwhelmed with what I am actually selling. And so, like, I loved selling cigars what is what does that mean the right offer Ooh, yeah we it, need a number is it about the people <laughs> is it about the people yeah is with it FedEx the I'm doing great is it about the <laughs> well yeah I mean I know, need to know I that mean, I'm obvious gonna... obviously money is part of it but I mean money money would not money would not attract me away from my position here in and of itself there has to be other things there are other things um if a company comes up to me and I know that they are a I I hate to say this, but like if I know that a company is a dying brand or if I know that a company, I mean, I worked in a cigar shop for four years. Mm -hmm. I know what brands sell. I know what brands don't sell. And granted, it is different now, mm -hmm. but I know that those brands have not, you know, jumped up and <laughs> suddenly started becoming bestsellers. Mm -hmm. So when Ashton offered me the job, I was like, absolutely. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. So... Um, I think that with the right offer, and there's a, don't get me wrong, there's a few irons in the fire. Mm -hmm. uh, I think with the right offer, I absolutely would consider it because I miss y'all. I miss the industry. <laughs> like I said, there's nothing like the cigar industry. There is nothing like it. There is nothing like it. Um, one of the regular things we do on the show, Kelly, is a... Um... We're out. <laughs> yeah, We're out. Kelly's killed your life. We're out. Um, is a would you rather question. Ooh, I like that. You ready for a little would you rather, Kelly? <laughs> Depending on what it is, yes. I mean, it's, it's better than truth or dare. <laughs> don't know about that. But... I don't know about that either. <laughs> So here is the would you rather question for tonight. Would you rather, and I'm going to start with Kelly and then we'll go around to everybody. Would you rather be able to see through walls? Oh, this is not even a cigar, would you rather? Nope. This is or, just a superhero, would you rather? Would you rather be able to walk through walls? You're starting with me? Yes. Yes, I am. Starting with you. Usually I have no trouble talking. That's why I'm, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Everyone is listening. I talk. My dad has always said I could talk spots off a leopard. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, probably see. See? Probably see through walls. Mm. Oh, see through walls. I, I would have to think it's see through walls as opposed to walk through walls because like you'd be able to you know be all creepy on people's conversations <laughs> well seeing doesn't mean hearing yeah but it mm, yeah can you but read lips you can read body language yeah, there you go hashtag sales like <laughs> yeah. hashtag sales <laughs> dave what about you me oh i would totally i'm down with the phase. I will walk through walls. Good for you. Why? Yeah, that's freaking cool. I mean, no more doors. 
They suck. Okay. Um, Pat, what about you? See through walls or walk through walls? I would do seeing just because it seems like it's more beneficial, I guess. Because I mean, I poke my head. Through. I don't really go around to the environments <laughs> where I'd benefit from walking through a wall. <laughs> Paul? I would rather walk through walls. Yeah. Um, now, the reason why I say that. Why? Is because I feel I'm the only you know, one. <laughs> if you notice me at work, I'm a fast walker. I have to get from point A to point B as quickly as I can. And if you got doors and walls and everything that stands in the way. Right. Or, or if cables I could, if on I could, the phone. And if I'm at home, too, if I have to go from, because we live in a, we don't live in, a, in an open. You live in a closed environment? Closed environment, yeah. yes. Thank you. If I can get from, if I can get from one room to the other very very quickly, that that would make me happy. So, Amen, Paul. walking through walls would yes. absolutely be my my thing. Pastor, walking through walls. Okay, go. so I'm the only weirdo. That's cool. No, nope, you and no, Pat. You, you, and, you Pat. and Pat. You and Pat. Somebody's watching me. <laughs> All right, we got to sing. Yay. <laughs> yep. The heck with obstacles. I want to be right. able to walk through the wall yeah. and just get to where I'm going. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but like, just, why? You know, no, because you could. Why? You need to talk to someone, and you just, you know, you don't have to like you no, poke your head in. Door. No, Open you just door. stick your head in and just be like, "Hey, do you, do you want a muffin? Like, <laughs> like what's going on?" <laughs> what <a> well, <laughs> okay. So Dan, Dave, Dave the Muffin Man, got his reason. The Muffin Man, he lived on Drury Lane. <laughs> Who knew that there would be so many Shrek references? <laughs> Not the gumdrop um, buttons. I know. Not the gumdrop buttons. <laughs> now, um, what's the? Uh... <laughs> Are we done? No. What's what's the final verdict here on the uh, Briar Fox? Is this is this good stuff or not? The lesh. It yeah. is. I'm yeah. sold out. I'm buying a tin. That's happening. Yeah, I think I think the tobacco is uh, is. I'm very, not a barley person. It's yet. very good on its own. I thought it would it, it had that great spice at the end, which I really really enjoyed. Um, the the 1792 again did take a little bit of that away from me, al along with the sweetness. Um, I think it's been an okay pairing. Yeah, I sweetness. would would. Probably wouldn't do this pairing again with it. Correct. Um, something like that would be a little bit less. Unless you had more ice. Yeah. Do you think yeah. this would have gone well with the Irish coffee idea we had? Or... Well, yes. With this tobacco? Yes, with this tobacco. I don't know. I mean, Pat said he had a specific, Find out next time. Pat said he had a specific <laughs> way of making it, so I don't know how that would have differed from what we well, would have had he tonight. He didn't have an issue making it. It was made for him. That was but it. that was really for the cigar yeah, we were thinking of. But Yeah, that was more for the cigar. Thank but, you. I don't know. We'll have to try it sometime. So, Dan. Yes. You very kindly, very Damn. graciously gave me a 20-year age pipe tobacco yesterday. I did. <gasps> Which Margate. one was it? Oh, Margate. Oh, my God. Oh, I was spoiled. You were spoiled. I was spoiled. You have no idea. I've watched. Well, now you do have an idea. I watched idea. Aragorn being like, but it is not this day. <laughs> and it's, uh, it was, I was spoiled. Wow. Margate and Aragorn, there you go. But my point is, Aragorn um, and the Return of the King. I told you, I, a Patron 50th. Oh, I haven't smoked it. I was, I could not. Don't taste worry, it. Pat. Well, you really For were Gondor, spoiled yesterday, weren't you? Gondor was an Opus Angel share. Ooh, Dan deserves nice. to brag about this yes. stuff. Like it was insane. But my point is that was the pipe tobacco that i smoked yesterday that was like oh i get it i get why pipes are awesome mm -hmm. this is second to that so you're enjoying you're enjoying it very much so i mean obviously you burned through several pipe i writers, i agree but... with paul that the so did you did i you... don't i think the pairing's too strong yes i think that going with maybe with a diplomatico too. rum or something like that would be better for this mm -hmm. um i think that something a little bit more mellow would be better with this yeah but uh in terms of the pipe to Pipe tobacco on its own, mm -hmm. it's, uh, like I said, I had that one yesterday, and now I'm smoking this, and I'm like, this is freaking awesome. <laughs> and it went really well. It just could have gone better, I suppose. Yeah. What about you, Pat? What do you think? Well, what do you hope it's you know, Yeah, the drink, that. I mean. <laughs> when my pipe screams. Sorry. <laughs> <Go>. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, don't I think it was good. Um, it, I mean, there was a couple of times that took a little bit more than I probably should have of a sip, and it definitely overpowered the tobacco. Yeah. Wow, that's good. So you had to really yeah. kind of Two sips instead of one. Damp it, Shelly. Shut up. Shelly. <laughs> you know how many times people have called? I've gotten called Ashley. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm Kelly. They're like, oh, I was thinking of Ashley. Oh, just gonna... <laughs> oh. 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 It has been numerous times, enough for me to mention. Shelly, obviously, because I'm Kelly Shemeth. So they're like, oh, Shelly. I'm like, no. Nope. That's a drug nope. cancer, Shelly. It's it's 2021 i there's i don't know anyone who's named shelly but that's fine <laughs> i have a question for you oh i love it go it's sports related too Ooh. is it about the bears who are playing it right is, now it, with well, my team it, it is about because the bears. they are dying so, a yeah. slow death so let me right ask now. you a question you have a new quarterback yep justin fields yes we do the most sacked quarterback this year yep <laughs> But he was very good with Ohio. Yep. Do you think he's the future? I do. I think that Justin Fields will be excellent within the next couple of years. Mm. Um, so you're blaming the O-line for him getting sacked 25 times. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you kind of got it when you're at that No, it's it's... it's you know, okay. I'm, I, listen, I'm pulling it up right now. I've been pulling it up. I don't know any, anytime anyone ever. I don't know any down, Bears fans. They are Pittsburgh is 14 and Bears are three. So, um, I. How th- many times did he get sick? <laughs> You're such a jerk. <laughs> In the spirit of full disclosure here, Kelly's best friend Lindsay also would walk through walls. Best friend Lindsay. There we go. Yeah, baby. Best friend Lindsay would walk through walls for me any day. Mm-hmm. She's the best girl I've ever met in my life. Would have been nice if I could walk through walls tonight. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. So I think that <laughs> I think within the next year or two, it, which is so frustrating because frust waiting. Fr- frust waiting. I love y'all. Y'all. Which is my way of. Mm, anyways, so um, I think that the. I, I'm frustrated at the fact that the Bears are not the Bears. They, you know what? The Bears. You know what? The Bears. The Bears. That is what she said because I'm saying it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's frustrating that the fact that the Bears are not the Bears where they should be. <laughs> Anyways, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Yeah. I'm gonna stop talking now because these guys are jerks. <laughs> Sack it to you. <laughs> Pat. Pointy. Yep. Thank you. Thank Final you words, smiling. Pat. <laughs> Welcome, Danny. For smiling there. Yeah, just for you. It's, well, no, it's just for the viewers, actually. Mm. <laughs> That's you right. See, you're an actual you live person. You can't hear smiles, you know. <clears throat> you know that, that checkbox thing that we all have to hit, I am not a robot. Capsa. <laughs> mm. mm. It's very good. Capsa. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Speaking of happy moments, people, uh, um, next week we're going to have Akil Kapisi, right? Is that yes, how, that's yes. how you pronounce the name? Yes. Yes. The president of Regis Cigars oh, is oh, going oh. to be live and Hody, in person Hody. with us next week on the show. And our pipe tobacco is going to be special, too. We're smoking GLP's Odyssey. Ooh, nice. Very nice uh, full-bodied English blend. Yeah, play some GLP's. Assassin's Creed. Maybe hey, English, uh, too. <laughs> no! English oh, blend for no. the English, English man. cigar dude. Yes. Yes, the, the Indian Englishman. Easy, man. Yes. Um, <laughs> so please make sure that if you're watching live, you subscribe to us here mm-hmm. on YouTube or Facebook. Yeah, and, that might uh, be nice. At not just Make some money. smoke at uh, on Instagram, and so that you don't ever miss a thing. Thanks for being with us tonight, people. Thank you very much, Kelly, for being with us. Kelly, good night, guys. It was an honor. Can I ask you a question? No, question? Yo, sorry, I want you, to ask you me, ran out of questions. Remember, I want you to ask me all the questions. What do you got? Would you ever come back? Yeah. Well, she has to. She has to sing me birthday. In a yeah. freaking heartbeat. All right. Wait, when's your birthday again? The twenty sixth, but we'll do it of November. Later. Yeah. Cool. Black we'll be Friday. Out there. Sales I'm gonna day. be like, "Happy birthday to you!" <laughs> oh, I'm blushing already. <laughs> All right, people. 
Thank you for being with us. You and heard it here first. <laughs> it's not just blowing smoke. <laughs> You've been listening to Not Just Blowing Smoke, the podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge, expertise, and fun of Twins Smoke Shop, New England's premier smoke shop, right to you, wherever you are, whenever you want it. You can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and keep in touch with us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at Not Just Blowing Smoke. Thanks for listening, everybody. And that is Not Just Blowing Smoke. <laughs> <laughs>